Okay, today was the final day of groups for the six Sweden majors, so let's talk about what went down. We now know all of the teams that are advancing to playoffs and all of the teams that are not advancing to playoffs. We knew a couple of them yesterday, but we got most of the confirmations today, and most of them actually in the first half of the day, making the latter half of the day a bit uninteresting, but at the very end of the day, it came down to a set of matches that did determine the very last spot, so that was cool to see. Okay, let's start with Group A. Phase Clan, first seed, Rogue, second seed. So Phase Clan look like possibly the best team at the event in terms of rounds over a 3.0 uh, round win to round loss ratio, plus 27, 15 to the 18 possible points. Their only loss came against Rogue, the second seed in their group, and it was a 7-5, so a little bit close. And I think it's possible that this loss came because they got a bit cocky or they underestimated Rogue. They were coming off of a double 7-0 first day, so I think they probably thought they were just about untouchable. And they came in and lost to Rogue. But again, it was max regulation, so not an embarrassing loss. If they had won just one more round, they would have got at least a, a point off it. And okay, I mean, it doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things because they still have by far the most impressive record, but it doesn't matter anyways because you just need the best record to get first seed, which they did. Uh, Rogue's uh, Rogue, I think, was a bit shaky, all things considered. I think this is probably the weakest group out of all of them in hindsight. Chiefs, I mean, they did okay. They were they were okay, but they were definitely weaker than some of their APAC counterparts. Oxygen, I mean, was definitely like terrible because because Fox A couldn't play with them, so they lost out on one of their main players, who was also their IGL. And then at, at that point, it seemed like they just sort of their mental was shot slash they didn't care, so they just were doing stuff i mean they, they took rogue to overtime twice which i think is very concerning for rogue going into the playoffs i think rogue might might be the weakest team in the playoffs we'll have to see what happens and uh we'll talk about it a little bit more in predictions and whatnot but yeah rogue got taken to overtime twice by like a just absolutely crippled auction and I, I i picked oxygen to go to playoffs originally but then i retconned my prediction after after the fox a news came out so i did get the this group right phase clan and rogue to advance so i mean yay for me but yeah auction just looked kind of lost in some of the games they were getting blown away but they did have a couple close games against rogue again for some reason and then chiefs again they were like okay not a terribly competitive group i mean 15 11 like four point gap four point gap four point gap four point gap like it's just over a over a game worth of gap between each one and then uh yeah it just feels like these two teams were just so far from qualifying so I guess that's all that I really want to talk about there. You'll notice there were like a couple of seven ones. This one was actually yesterday. Today we started off the day and there were two streams going. So in the first three games uh, from each stream, so three and three, six, in the first six games a day, we saw seven or sorry, four, seven and ones. And three of them were consecutive on one stream, which is pretty crazy. So, right. I guess, I guess that's all there is to talk about. Not a terribly exciting group. The only overtimes that we had were or, well, we had three of them, but Rogue against Oxygen was two of them, which, again, super weird. But then also Chiefs versus Rogue, and then, which is especially weird given the context of Rogue 7 wanting them in the next game. So I, I don't know why that happened there. So maybe Rogue is heating up or something, but then they also beat FaZe Clan the first time and the lost them the second time. So, again, I'll talk about the teams when I uh, do playoff predictions and whatnot, but uh, let's move on from there. Group B, Team 1 and Sandbox qualified. So... My prediction for this was Team 1 and Dark Zero, and maybe the Dark Zero prediction was like a bit uh, a bit overzealous, but I was mostly basing that on their performance in Mexico, which surprised me, so I thought maybe they would surprise me here relative to their regional performance, but they did not. And this was like the closest group, well, was it this group? Yeah, at the end of the day, in terms of points, I suppose, from the top to the bottom, it was only a six-point gap, it was the tightest. So it was a little bit interesting there, but also a lot of very uninteresting scores in this group. No overtime games, only one max regulation game, and I mean a few 7-4s, but a lot of 7-1s, all four of these, and then one here as well, so just a whole bunch of that. Sandbox edged out over Vitality because they had the head-to-head, -head, and they massively had the head-to-head, -head, right? Because it was a 14-4 um, yeah, to head-to-head -head because they beat them in both of their games, and they beat them in a 7-3, a and they beat them in a where is it? 7 1. So for some reason, Sandbox just had Vitality's number. They lost to Team 1 both times, and they lost to Dark Zero one time, whereas Team Vitality, I guess, beat Dark Zero both times, and they beat Team 1 one time. That's the way that has to work out, right? 
And yeah, uh, Dark Zero looked like they might make a little bit of a resurgence, and they were only one game away, three points away from being on nine points with these guys. If they'd like beat Team One, I guess uh, all of them would have been on nine points. But uh, yeah, it does look like Team One is the best team coming out of this group, and especially on round count, they were uh, pretty positive, whereas everyone else was negative to varying levels. So we'll see what happens there. Team One, I don't know if they're going to repeat in this major because. There are three teams from LATAM moving forward, NIP and Team 1 and FaZe, and two of them were the the two highest point getters in groups, uh, NIP and FaZe, and of course Team 1 was top of their group as well. But not, uh, you know, maybe not what you'd expect from the reigning major champions. So, yeah, again, like not too terribly much to talk about here because the games were like fairly uninteresting in terms of score, uh, yeah, score line and gameplay and stuff. Sandbox might be like the second weakest team coming into playoffs after Rogue. I mean, maybe they're the weakest, or maybe they, maybe I'm underestimating them. I don't know. But, all right, we'll move on. Group C. And this team, or rather this group, was like the least competitive when you're looking at the top half versus the bottom half. I mean, a 10-point gap. That's insane. And Sonics just have sort of struggled at international play. They did put up a better showing here than they did at Mexico. They got two points here at Mexico and they got four points here so I mean twice as many points that's cool but they did have rather tough opponents uh NIP and and BDS are I mean possibly the two best teams at the event but two of the better teams at the event it's looking like at the moment and then Invictus uh was one of the weaker teams decidedly because they had a similar situation to Oxygen where one of their team one of their players was not able to attend it wasn't their IGL like for Oxygen but it was still one of their very good players and they subbed in Gig, but their sub uh, of Gig did pretty well. I want to, I think, uh, I'll look at the stats at the end of this. I want to go over the whole, uh, just glance at everyone's stats for the group stage. I think Gig might have been like top two fraggers on his team, like the, just in sheer number of kills. Uh, but we'll look at that. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm getting that mistaken. Yeah, Invictus, I think it did okay given the circumstances, but one, one in five doesn't really reflect that too well. But uh, they looked like they might be coming out of the gates hot because they almost beat Nip or at least almost took him to overtime. They went up 5-1 on Bank and Bank is looking to be extremely attacker sided, so maybe not the the greatest feat because um then Nip 6-0 them on on Nip's attacking half. So, you know, uh they got close. They could have at least got a point there if they just got one of those rounds, but they did not. So, and then it just uh, sort of went downhill from there, but then they managed to get a win in their very last game of of the group stage against Sonics, but they were on zero points and Sonics was already on four. So even though they got the full three points, it was not enough to tie or pass them or anything. So they were locked in that last place, but at least they get to go home knowing that they got at least one W. And it's unclear if Sonics were playing at like full force or like hiding strats a little bit because they do have the uh, North American League finals coming up, presumably next month. I don't know exactly when, but I imagine it's around the 12th for uh, one reason or another. But I cannot confirm that because I don't actually know. So yeah, they could have been they could have been holding back a little bit. Sonics, uh, it's it's possible. But also, you know, maybe they just lost. Who just, who's to really say? BDS versus Nip. So they beat them the second time, right? It was a it was a seven four for BDS the second time they played, and the first time they played, it was a seven four for Nip. So very evenly matched. If BDS had not gone to overtime against Sonics in in the game earlier today. Then they would have been on the same number of points as as Nip. They would have been both on 15, and then also, what, they would have had the exact same record and exact same head-to-head, and I guess BDS would have been first in the group because they would have had the better differential. So I, guess, I mean, even assuming it's a 7-5, so their differential wouldn't change because it 8-6 to 7-5, of course, it's the same. It's plus 2, so I, yeah, I guess they would have been... I, I think that's how that breaks down, right? It's based on it's head to head, and then it's like win percentage or something, and then it's round differential. So BDS would have been first, but uh, BDS is second instead. Uh, we'll see how much it matters in the end. So, and because it's entirely possible that these two teams meet in the grand finals because they they guaranteed that no teams would meet in the quarterfinals and also in the semifinals. So everyone that was in the same group is on the opposite side of the bracket. So they cannot play against each other until the grand finals, assuming they you know make it to the grand finals so that was that group yeah terribly <laughs> uncompetitive but a few good games came out of it and uh, I, I especially like this game because I mean it's an overtime game so it uh, sort of gets preferential treatment but then also you get to see Sonics uh, at their best 
they they had some pretty bad games unfortunately like they lost seven seven two to nip in the last seven two two to seven i guess also to bds so that's pretty unfortunate but uh they did better after the after that then they, they beat invictus and they got close to beating bds taking them to overtime and then the last day they seven five lost to invictus which isn't the best but at least they kept it competitive and then they uh what was their other result sonics and and yeah they took uh they took nip to or no yeah they took nip to max regulation as well which is cool so you know they they might have only done really well in one day but they at least kept that last day competitive where they didn't get another win so right i guess i can move on from there i don't think there's anything else i need to mention nip uh, yeah okay we'll move on Finally, we have Group D, the group of death, the most interesting group. And honestly, like half of these games were insane, like top level bangers. Like you just got to watch some of these. And it's a most, I think most of the space station games and most of the damn on games are, were incredible. So you got to peep some of those, but okay, let's talk about the group. So damn on just barely edged out space station for first place, but still space station and damn on will be going into the playoffs space station lost to damn on both times. The first one was quite tight at 15 rounds, but then the second one, a seven, four victory for damn on. And it was on a, it was on clubhouse, which damn on, I guess are just really good on. They seem insane. Those guys are crazy, but we'll, ha we'll see once they have to play more than more than a few maps, you know, once, once we get into best two out of three territory, which of course the, playoffs are and then grand finals best three out of five because my understanding is that they are really really good on some maps and then kind of weaker on some maps and and i think clubhouse being uh, perhaps their best map i think they i think that's the map they played against nip at at mexico and beat them both times and then they beat um empire there, or no did they i don't recall where they played empire but and i guess empire um beat them the second time but the first time didn't yeah Damn on one the first time. I think this whoops. Oh man. Doing that. Uh okay, let's go back down. Yeah. Anyways, right. So coming into the day, all of these teams could have qualified. It was possible. Furia was exceedingly unlikely. They needed to do extremely well, and they needed Damn One and Empire to do really badly, and thus Space Station to do really well, but they got uh, knocked out, I think, in the first round. Space Station was confirmed, and Furia was knocked out when Space Station beat Empire for which uh, this game? No, not that game. Where is it? This game? No, not that game either. Where is it? Uh, this game. Yeah, it's it's weird that like the outer one has these. Yeah, it's just like weird how it's orientated. Anyways, yeah. So when Space Station beat Empire, Space Station was locked in because Furia and Empire couldn't pass them, so they're locked in. But going into the very last set of games for the day, which was Space Station versus Damon and Empire versus Furia. If Empire won in regulation against Furia, which they did, it was like a 7-1, seven, 7-1 one, seven, one beatdown, yeah. And Damon couldn't take Space Station to overtime, I believe that was the win condition, then Empire would have gone to playoffs rather than Damon. But Damon ended up winning the game in regulation time, good for them. Because And then actually, because if they'd gone to overtime at all, I think Space Station still would have been first place, right? Because, yeah. Damn one would have got one fewer point than they did, guaranteed, and Space Station would have got at least one more point. So yeah, Damn one needed to win in regulation to get first place, and they needed to, to just to just go to overtime at least to to go to playoffs. So they did both of those things. Good for them. And I guess that's pretty much it. Again, if you want to see some crazy games, watch these, and hopefully we'll see some more crazy games in the playoffs in the quarterfinals. These are the quarterfinal matchups, and again, I think I'll do predictions and stuff in the future in a future video which probably i'll just record later but uh nip versus ssg that is a rematch of the 2020 si finals that ssg won team one versus rogue i don't think they've played for phase clan versus bds i want to say they played at si 2020 but i'm not sure and they might have also played at 2021 but it's possible uh, i mean it's like at least a 50 percent chance right because of groups but I I I, I want to say they played in the playoffs for one of those. Maybe maybe I'm not maybe I'm not sure on that though. I'm definitely not sure. Maybe I'm not correct. Damon versus Sandbox. I I imagine these guys have played before. They're both from APAC, so this will be an APAC team kill. But it also guarantees that we will have a an APAC team and APAC North team and a Korean team since they are both all of these things I believe uh, in the semifinals. So that'll be cool. And then other than that, none of these are team kills. We have. Latam versus NA, we have Latam versus EU, and we have another Latam versus EU. So we will have 
Um, I well, I guess I yeah, I guess the only one that's guaranteed is APAC because all three. It's possible all three LATAM get knocked out. All all you know, all one NA get knocked out. Both Europe get knocked out. All of these things are possible, and we'll talk about it in the future. So right, let's move over to. Yeah, I guess we can just glance at this. Yeah, NA was just the worst team, and so like. It's a little bit better though if you just if you subtract um, oxygen's results, they went like one in five, right? So six and twelve, it's still pretty bad, but it's like not as bad, right? It's a little bit better. And then by that metric though, you sort of also have to subtract Invictus from APAC. So that's um yeah one in five, but then that also negates some. Okay, yeah, it's just a whole whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, I guess North America was just the worst in groups, followed by. Followed by APEC, followed by Europe, and then once again the LATAM is on top. So let's look at the stats, right? Okay, I have them organized by team, so we'll just sort of glide through them and see what happened. Vitality, although they were tied in second place on points, so that would indicate they should have like okay ratings. And I guess they're like okay, but the average is certainly below one, right? With uh, these really bringing it down. Uh, not great. On entry, I mean, we have P4 doing pretty well. Cactus doing pretty well as well. But uh, and then the other one's not doing that bad, just minus ones and minus two. Some good, some good cost numbers and stuff. Cactus on top, that's cool. Um, I don't actually know who the IGL for this team is. Is it Cactus? Um, I don't know. Let me know below. Okay, and then for Rogue, we have Prano going crazy. So this guy is just incredible, right? He's playing Smoke Thermite, and he's on the top of his team. He was tied for the second most frags. He is the second most positive on frags. Minus two on entry, which is like whatever. Uh, he's not involved in that much entry. And I guess everyone on his team was within plus minus two, which is cool. Uh, really high cost, decent KPR, highest survival rate, and that comes with the um, that comes with the support player thing. But 12 plants. 12 plants and these frag numbers are pretty incredible. So this guy is very good, and I think it's pretty obvious that he's the reason why Rogue is looking as good as they are at the moment. Not to say that the rest are doing terribly. Um, Leon is like a little bit negative, but even you know just on rating, barely negative. Rips, right, even, and then Aces and Crying doing pretty well. Dark Zero, uh, everyone's negative because they got kind of popped. Uh, they did get, I mean, well, I guess they only got three points. Or, or wait, no, they got six points, yeah. So, you know, you you could have seen better stats at, from the six points, but they did get absolutely crushed in a lot of games. So not too many redeeming factors here. Some slight, slightly positive things, um, you know, hyper at an okay survival rate and just... Pretty bad all around. Very unfortunate. I, I do want to see these guys bounce back. It has been known of Dark Zero to do pretty poorly when making a roster move and then a few months later getting into the groove of things. So we'll see if that happens or not. And they do have the US Finals. Or, I always want to say US Finals. The NAL Finals to play next month. So we'll see how they look there. Space Station. The the stats are pretty spread out here with Skies being the most negative. And it makes sense being a, a hard breach uh, support main. Sometimes players have better stats when they play hard reach or support on defense if they don't play both of those things. Like maybe you play hard reach on attack, but you play roam on defense, and so that gets you some you, you rack up some rating on defense, and then maybe you play smoke on defense, but you play flex on attack, so you get some stuff there. Okay. But so unfortunately when you play both, your stats suffer a lot of the time. Not all of the time. Some players like um like Prano, make it work, but Skies didn't make it work, but whatever. I mean, they're going to the playoffs, so we'll see if it costs them or not. Um, not as positive on entry as you'd expect SSG to go. Like, they they only went plus two overall. SSG usually want to be being one of the best entry teams in the world, and I guess that's for their respective region, so, you know, it's a little bit different when you're playing against the other top teams in the world. Rampy on top for his team, which is pretty good. Bosco, I want to say he did really well this last day so i think his stats must have been kind of bad before today because I, I think he was the top of the team in the first game top t probably top two and then i think he might have also been top two in the second game and but if they'd done better in that game uh, things might have changed up because he was doing pretty well especially early on he had like a big effective 4k he didn't get the last kill but they won on time with the diffuser so uh yeah hot and cold not not doing too well this is the guy who had like some of the best stats ever and now he's just barely hanging on to a 1.0 but uh pretty effective in the entry though still over a 2.0 so that's looking good at least i uh, hopefully we'll see these guys bounce back a little bit in terms of stats because well i'm assuming if they get good stats they'll be winning games so 
Let's see what happens in the playoffs for them. Psycho going crazy here. It's usually Muzi and Pino, I believe, that are that are getting the really good stats for this team, but I think Psycho as well. I mean, playing playing Yana Vigil, it's sort of it makes sense. And then Julio and Kamikaze are more on the support roles. You know, Mira, Mute, Thermite, Thatcher, these are supporty kind of things. And then uh, Julio really suffered on the entry when he was involved in it, but still positive rating, Kamikaze same, you know, a little bit better rating than Skies, but playing the same sort of thing. SAS on defense and Thermite on attack. So pretty good stats. This is, I mean, they're like the second best performing team, I guess. They were tied on points with FaZe, but FaZe, I think, had more dominant wins, better round differential. Invictus. Yeah, so Gig, yeah, he did. He, yeah, he was the second most fragging player. Of course, he was a little bit more negative than Joe was, but 44 kills, the only one higher speakeasy. Hysterics, I, Hysterics, excuse me, I think was a pretty big fragger for this team, but I, I think he was playing on the same roles. So, like, I mean, Sledge and Malusi are generally pretty frag heavy roles, but look how much entry this guy did. He did more than like several other players combined. He 24, he went plus four. Like, quite imp very impressive performance for. Or just subbing in as a coach. I mean, he's not a bad player, but just under the circumstances, he, maybe he was just he was going really hard before the event because they were somewhat aware of of what was going to happen. But regardless, they're out, so no no way to improve their stats going forward. Sandbox, these guys did make it, but look, they they very their stats are uh, not hot. So I think because they got super popped in a few of their games, but I mean they're they're going to playoffs, so we'll have to see what happens. Yeah, I guess. Let me let me glance back at Rogue really quick. Yeah, they're definitely better stats. So I mean, in terms of stats, these guys got to be the worst team going into into the playoffs. But um, I don't know. We'll see. I'm probably predicting it against both Sandbox and Rogue. But uh, so I I think comparing them is is moot. But maybe if one of them wins, then I'll be, be made to look foolish. If Rogue win and Sandbox lose, could be. But okay, right. Emmy Taylor did pretty good uh, on KD, but you know, pretty bad on entry. Curious. And Static did well here, but uh, not not too hot around here. And, I mean, whatever. It all came together. It's weird to see two complete clones of each other right next to each other. A little bit weird. Nova seemed like he's struggling. I don't know who the IGL is here. I mean, I'm just going to assume it's Nova because usually the, the lowest rated... Well, I mean, it could be either of these two based on the roles, but I, I have no idea. Let me know if you know who, who it is for them. Oxygen, all negative. They got destroyed in this... For the most part, except for the two road games, I guess. Uh yeah, hopes. You know, subbing in as a coach. You know, what can you really expect? I guess this he's made to look even worse here, considering how good Gig did. But uh, yeah, God, minus forty. That's brutal. And the minus six at a point two five ratio. Yeah. Uh, it, it just sucks. It is what it is. Like you, you know, it's, I you can't you can't draw anything from these stats. They're just unmeaningful, right? Uh, they make they they more or less make sense in terms of the ordering here, I suppose. Uh, Vertical and Yaga were generally like fraggers, and then Laxing sort of in the middle, and then Kino supporty kind of play, but not really. And like look like at these operators, yo, this is the grimiest defense lineup ever, for uh, for like average stats. That's insane. Uh, Phase Clan, these stats are gonna be nuts. I think I I was looking at this before they played the last round of games. So after five of the six games have been played, and Bullet was on, I believe forty eight and sixteen. He had a three point oh KD at plus, uh, what is it? Pl at plus thirty two. So it it was definitely brought down this last game. But he was uh, that's insane. And and Cyber was also crazy. It was like two point oh ish, and he's a little bit lower than two point oh here. But Bullet still has a two point two point five KD. That's that's crazy. That is so nuts. Um, yeah, FaZe might just be winning this tournament, but we'll have to see what happens. Uh, they're looking quite good. Really impressive stats. Want just souls, just slightly negative, but again, just your hard support player. Sort of makes sense. Entry, just one minus one. Everyone else is positive. Yeah, it, uh, these guys slapped their group up. Empire going home, but they had quite good stats. Everyone went positive, and uh, I mean, that's a little bit curious. I guess Furio went... When we get to them, must have like pretty pretty bad stats. They must have taken the brunt of the force from that group. But yeah, so that's that's cool to see. That but I mean, I'm sure they don't care because they have to go home. They can they can go home and on the flight look at their stats all they want. But uh, yeah, uh, and it's not like terribly high average either. It's like a little bit above one, like one point zero eight or something. But oh uh, whatever. Chiefs. Uh yeah, official guy decimated digital decimated. Yeah, pretty much everyone decimated right. Uh, where they did like okay. But they were they were smacked around kind of hard and unfortunate, you know, just 
nobody went positive on KD and like two players went positive on entry. And then you see some red over here. Damn Juan Kia, yes. Is this guy just like the best player in the world or something? Like why why is he so good? How's he how he do that? Uh and I I I end up just like every other APAC team. I don't know who the IGL is here. I, I was assuming it was Cat Sang or Coded, but uh, I don't actually know. If you know this one, let me know. Uh, Rin went uh, negative. I think Rin was touted as being super impressive, and I think he was in a few of the games really impressive, but he had some other really bad games to bring his stats right down to about even. Uh, yeah, Yas just... I, he, he, he didn't like carry the team, but he was a really big factor into why they are now going to playoffs as the first seed in the group. So good on them. Let's see. I, I think these guys could win the major. I think it's possible, but I do think still that the... Uh, the whole map thing might come back to bite them. Sonics, I mean, Grixer got his, I guess, and then Erexen went positive, and everyone else kind of struggling. Super, let it be known, he was the, the Shiko Slayer at this event, so good on him. And he was getting some frags in that NIP game, I think, as well. But other than that, you know, pretty negative, and it just is reflected by their... Why, did they go 1-5, in five, right? Yeah, like 1-5, in 1-0, 1-4 or something, 1-5 in five effectively. Furia, yeah, the three players really struggled here, and then Rare and Fantasy did all right. And Fantasy, I think, had some incredible games, and he had some really bad games also, so that brought him down to where he is currently. And then Rare... Rare was bossing up. I mean, Habana mute, but then... Damn, these guys got a lot of mute and Habana and Sledge. They just, not, yo, it's not very colorful. They only got three colors here. What's going on? why they do... Okay. So... Yeah, I think I think Furia sort of underperformed at this event. They definitely could have made it out of groups, uh, especially if they had been in any other group except for the absolute group of death. Uh, BDS also, is, but I, I said this about um, Yas, but is Bride the best player in the world or something? Yeah, yeah. I I think I think it's especially hard to judge because he's on support, but I think also the stats that this guy puts up regularly are made way more impressive by the fact that he's on. He is literally always playing hard breach and smoke like. How how does he do? This? How is he so highly rated? So much higher than, you know, it's like closest with Shiko, but everyone besides that, so much higher than them. He has 50 kills, which is the third most on his team, tied for most positive, positive of here. Like this got this has to be the highest cost, right? Certainly, surely, it is, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Highest cost in the event at the moment, and he has nine plants and 46 for. Like, this guy's insane. And you have to, of course, credit some of this to the support of his teammates. You know, him being the support player, but still, he, he is helped by his teammates. And perhaps the play style of BDS. But, like, this this guy brought BDS from, like, a good team to incredible. I mean, I guess when you replace RXWD, it's just sort of... <laughs> it is what it is. But, yeah, Bride is nuts. Possibly top five players in the world. Possibly best player in the world. Hard to say. He's crazy. And, you know, Shaiko did uh, really good, too. 3.0 on, on entry, plus 10 quite good this might be the highest entry was, was there a plus 11 that I, I remember seeing or not uh no it looks like shiko best best entry yeah so good on them bds this might be their event they might do it people said that in mexico and they didn't do it but it was quite close they almost made it to the finals and they might have won the finals and then finally we have team one alamau the highest rated player at the moment 1.55 at an international land over the course of six maps this is insane. This guy, I like, unbelievable. He played Twitch. He plays Smoke on defense, and I, he's a pretty aggressive Smoke player, but, like, this is this maybe the second highest cost. Like, this ha has to be the highest KPR. Uh, I'm actually curious on that. Let me let me scroll back through. Highest KPR, but no, no. Cyber's pretty close, but uh, still not quite there. Yeah, highest KPR at the event. 2.0 KD, like, almost 2.0 entry KD. 40% survival, and I'm sure these stats will diminish in the playoffs when they get a little bit fiercer competition, but, like, look look how heavily he outrated his teammates, but even his teammates, like, you know, even Lagonis barely went negative, KDS right at one, uh, Levy did really well, but, oh my god, like, these are just next-level stats, so uh, we'll see what happens for them, and they have potentially the easiest or, like, second easiest or whatever opponent in the quarterfinals, so that should... We'll see if it's a breeze. I, I really want to see Rogue put up a good fight there, but yeah, that might not happen. This, these guys are playing. Al Alamau is playing like on a, on another level. And okay, I made this video mega long because I wanted to look at the stats, but it is what it is. So okay, I guess that's gonna be it. I will, you know, have more videos 
later and in the future and whatnot. So I will catch you in those. Until next time.